two, one. Okay. Ryan Galloway, Jude, Jude McLaren. McLaren. Yeah, bro. <laughs> okay. So welcome to the Strive College Football Playoff selection show, but more just reaction show is what it would be. We'll give our top tens, but we got to talk about these rankings because what a week for us to choose to do this, Ryan, because we've got some whack stuff in here. But um, just just before we get into that, what, what are your kind of thoughts on this season overall going into championship week? So it's been an interesting season, and I think that certain conferences handled the uh, pandemic better than others. I'd like to say that uh, the SEC and the Big 12 did very good. Um, the a lot, of the, a lot of the group of five conferences did really well as well, but then it comes to the Pac-12 and the Big 10, and I don't know what they were thinking because they knew one way or another they were going to play football, so might as well play football from the get-go so that way you don't have to worry about oh your conference champion has six wins the sec's conference champion has 11 wins Uh uh-oh that's not good and then you also have situations like with the big 10 with ohio state they're changing the rules that they set up and the standards and practices they set up in order for (laughs) them to yeah it does not make sense to me (laughs) yeah other than that you know it's it's been it's been great and i've enjoyed watching it yeah i think that like out of all the realities in the multiverse that we live in, this is a pretty good outcome of the season, you know, like, yeah, the PAC 12 and the, and the big 10 made mistakes. And I, I give a little bit more like sympathy to the PAC 12 because California where a lot of their teams reside and just the West coast and the Northwest in general have a lot stricter COVID laws than like other states around the US. So I can give them a little bit of like leeway when like their governor was like, you can't do anything. So I can understand how it took them a little bit more time to kind of come up with their schedule and everything. Um, But with the big 10, I mean, I guess I'm not super educated on those states up there in the kind of the Midwest, but from what I know, it still wasn't anywhere near as strict as the West coast. So on them, it's kind of like, come on now. Like with the whole Ohio State thing, but really all in all, I mean, there are teams that have played 12 games. There are teams that have played 11 games, like you said, even in the group of five um, and and the Big 12 and, and the SEC and the ACC. Um, really, honestly, I didn't give more credit to the Big 12 and the ACC than to the SEC because yeah. they've got some non-conference games in. Um, so really overall, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way that this season went. I feel like any damage that occurred didn't really like affect the outcome, if that makes sense. Yeah, I would definitely agree. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're still going to have relatively the same top teams. And that's kind of what we're seeing with Ohio state still being number four, which we can get into the rankings in a little bit, but I mean, it's, they're the tried and true. Yeah, it makes it easy. Exactly. And, and as time has gone on, you know, I was kind of upset with them, but and I don't, and I, and we can talk a little bit about, you know, like how they changed the rules like late in the game after they didn't get that game against Michigan. But at the same time, like when I'm sitting at it and I'm being honest with myself, I'm like, okay, you know, they're probably the best team in the Big Ten. It's, it's pretty obvious. And they probably are one of the top four teams in the country. So, I'm not that mad at it because it's like, it's probably the best team, which is what the college football playoff is supposed to do. But also I feel a lot of hurt for Indiana because that is a program that has been desperate for just any football relevance. And this year they, if they, if they would have stuck with the rules, they would have been in the big 10 championship and they only lost to Ohio state by one touchdown and picked off Justin Fields, one of the best quarterbacks in the country three times in that game. So that's another team that we'll get into in these rankings here in a second that I disagree with where they're at, but it's morally wrong, but <laughs> football, football wise, it's probably right. So there you go. There you go. Well, do you just want to go one by one on this and like kind of talk about each like team and, and give your thoughts on like where they're at? Um, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, cool. So Bama, I think that's right. They got that that's one. E- that's an easy one. Mac Jones. Uh, well, before last week was looking like the Heisman favorite, but I mean, they have three players that could easily win the Heisman trophy. I mean, there's no yeah. denying their greatness. Nick Saban is Nick Saban. That defense is real. That offense is even more real. 
Devonte Smith, and then they're getting back. Um, what's his name? Oh, Waddle, Jalen Waddle. They're getting J- Jalen Waddle back. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna annihilate Florida next week. Um, and maybe even if Florida puts up a fight, they're winning that game. But and now you can even argue that Mac Jones is Heisman odds are are even higher with Kyle Trask having three turnovers to the worst defense in LSU history statistically. Um, But anyways, Notre Dame at two. I'm not mad at it. I like that. I like that as well. No, I mean, they're undefeated and people often like to dog on Notre Dame for their schedule, not being in a conference, stuff like that. Okay. Well this year they're in a conference. They have legitimate wins and you know, you could, you can scoff at the Clemson win. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence wasn't playing, but uh, DJ, uh, Ooh, ooh, ukulele. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> uh, ooh, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, what, whatever you say, man. But still, it took I me mean, years to, to get that right. <laughs> Anyways, that's a pretty complete Clemson team that they beat. And, you know, we're going to see what happens in the conference championship. But I think regardless, win or loss, I think you're going to find Notre Dame in the playoff. Yeah. So the one thing I will say, and everybody points to the DJ thing whenever it comes to that game. And a lot of people don't know this, and I didn't even know this when I was watching the game, but they did have a lot of – Clemson had a lot of defensive backs out too, so that could be another big factor. But even with that being said, you've got to understand that the guys who are the backups at Clemson are still like four- and five-star recruits because Clemson has literally become the second coming of Alabama whenever it comes to just college football in general at this point. So, I mean, they've only lost – one regular season game in the past three seasons. And it was when they're, you know, one of the most talented quarterbacks we've seen in this decade, you know, wasn't playing. So, I mean, a lot of people can say like, oh, you know, Notre Dame, maybe if they're playing Clemson at full strength, they won't win that game. But I think besides like the Louisville flub where they only won 12, seven, they've really looked good this year. And this is the best that I've seen personally a Notre Dame team look like the last time that Notre Dame was in the playoffs. I was like, yeah, they're going to get wrecked this year. I mean, they'll probably still get wrecked because it's Bama, but I still feel like that this is when it comes to a Notre Dame undefeated playoff team, this is the best that they've looked in my opinion. I would agree with that. And then, um, yeah, if it comes down to Alabama and Notre Dame, which it very well could, I think we're going to get a replay of the 2012 championship. Yeah. So unfortunate for Notre Dame in that regard, because they really have put together a really good season. Um, Clemson at three. I 100% agree with this as well. Yeah. The top three is easy. Clemson, honestly. And then at full strength, you could easily put Clemson at two as well. I I I have no problem with that. Um, But yeah, Clemson's number three. And then after this is where we start to get some, uh, some variants. Yeah, for sure. And so I kind of talked about this, a little bit earlier, but I'm okay with Ohio state at four because just with all of the other crap that's below them, um, I think they're better than every one of those teams. And I think that really they probably would beat, I get they've only played five games and I get that Florida just proved that down the road, you can slip up, but I don't know. I just, I just don't think Ohio state's Florida. Um, As much as I don't like Ryan day. And I think he's kind of got that, like a little bit too much confidence, like, a Dan Mullen does too. Um, I still think that just talent wise, they would, they would beat a lot of the teams that they play. Um, So I'm fine with them at four. I understand other people's grievances, um, but I just, in my opinion, I just think they're the fourth, like, I just think they're the fourth best team in the country, just straight up. Like I know they've only played five games, but they're going to get a championship game. And I agree with it. Sorry. (laughs) I'm uh I'm struggling, Jude. I'm struggling a little bit because Ohio State, if Ohio State were to play Texas A&M, there's not a doubt in my mind that they would beat the brakes off yeah. of A&M. Yeah. But if Texas A&M wins against Tennessee this weekend, that is, I I, I don't know how you can look at a a, a nine and one. Texas A and M versus They'll a be five eight and, and zero Ohio State eight and one. Yeah, and, okay. and Ohio State will be six and zero with the conference championship. Yeah, I mean, Ohio and, State and, okay. could lose in the conference championship. That's, that's to true. But that's true. But but what I will say, and and this I think lingers in the committee's mind. I really doubt if the committee puts Texas A and M in, then 
I don't know what they're doing <laughs> because we've already they're gonna they're gonna play Bama unless Florida comes out and beats Bama, and then they're gonna end up regardless whoever they play right because in all likelihood I think Clemson's gonna beat Notre Dame right and so if Bama loses this week to Florida right say they lose to Florida, mm-hmm. they're still getting in at one loss and then probably Clemson if they beat Notre Dame moves up to number one right. Mm-hmm. Clemson smacking Texas A&M. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in all likelihood, Bama's winning the Florida game. We've already seen Bama, Texas A&M. And we know that the result is 52 to 24. So I'm, I'm like, if I'm the committee, I think it's pretty easy for me to put Ohio State in over Texas A&M, especially when they're a conference champion. And it's like, well, you, you can't blame them for what their conference did. You know, I agree with the conference championship part. I, I still think it's, you know, it's it's a little bit unfortunate that the Big Ten ended up having to break their own rules in order to do that. And it's also unfortunate that, look, outside, barring any very strange, very unforeseen event, uh, it's going to be these four teams in the yep. playoff. And it's going to be either, let's be honest, it's probably going to be Alabama Clemson in the national championship. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that, too. Um, and, and, but you know what is interesting, Ryan, and I didn't think about this until now. What if Notre Dame loses a close game? Do they only drop to three? You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. they've just played so many more games. Would they flip-flop? I think, you know, before like we had this conversation, I was thinking that, okay, if Notre Dame loses, they're probably going to drop to four, and Ohio State will move up to number three. But the more I think about it now, I don't know if the committee would drop Notre Dame to four in a close game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're Wait only... a minute. Are we going to potentially, are we going to see Notre Dame versus Clemson twice in a row, three times this year? Oh, I didn't even think about this. See, and they can't do that. Can can't. they? <sighs> but I don't yeah. know if you can move an undefeated, like Ohio state with only six games above a Notre Dame. Exactly. So I, I, I really don't know what they can do. I mean, of course, Notre Dame could come out and beat Clemson, in which case, then, then Clemson's Texas, probably out. You know, yeah, Clemson's going to be out, and then Texas A&M scoots their way in to but get that's lost. That's just mm. stupid. You can't, you can't put Texas A&M in. But we don't want to see in. that. Yeah. So you can't do we put get, Texas A&M in. Do we get uh, Iowa State? Yeah. A no, big I, champion Iowa State? I genu- Okay, so that's what I genuinely think that would happen. I really do. Because I don't think that – I think that just at the end of the day, the committee's going to be like, we've already seen Texas A&M Alabama. Like, we've already yeah. seen it. That's not going to be a game. Like, there's no point of playing that game. And, yeah, I I genuinely think that they put a two-loss Big 12 champion in, which I think is BS personally, but we'll talk about <laughs> that later. Um, but anyways, so, but, but personally, if you were on the committee, would you put Ohio State at four at this moment? Yeah. Okay, me too. Okay, so point is, we're good with the top four. Yes. <laughs> right? Okay. And now, here we go. Okay. So Texas A&M at five, I know that you probably heavily disagree. And to be fair, I don't think, I don't think they're the fifth best team in the country, but I think I have to put them at five too, just because their only loss is to Alabama. Um, and they're in the SEC. Would I ever put them in the playoff? No. But yeah. I just think because of the nature – of like who they've played and I know they've had some really bad wins, but like, I don't know. I think you just give them five just because once again, they're, they're only losses to Pama. I, I don't think they're the fifth best team in the country though. I think that regardless, you have to have them in the top 10 just based on their body of work. But that schedule is not, you know, last year and the year before a and among the most difficult schedules in the game. This year, they haven't had a difficult schedule. They lost to Alabama, which, you know, can you really fault them for that? Not really. That's no. the best team in the league. But I don't know. That that win against Florida at home is looking a little less uh, a little less sexy after Florida's lost to LSU. Well, and also considering that Kellen Mond threw 33% against LSU and scored 13 points in the game. Well, that's and- another thing. The, the number five team in the nation does not have a good quarterback. Yeah. They don't have a good win either. So 
Yeah, there you go. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing here? Yeah, honestly, you know what? At this point, Ryan, I'm like, put Cincinnati at five. Put Cincinnati, put Iowa State at five. I don't care. They got no, 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 no. Okay, but here's the thing about Iowa State. Okay, can we get into Iowa State? Let's if your logic State. is Iowa State at five, then the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns and the Coastal Carolina Shanta Clears, however you say it, the damn beach chickens need to be at five and six. But no, because they did Louisiana not beat Iowa State 31 to 14 in Ames. It was the first game of the year. Okay, BS. It doesn't matter. Coastal Carolina, Louisiana hasn't lost to anybody except an undefeated team in the country that took BYU, one of the most talented teams in the country, on two days' notice and beat them. And they beat Kansas 48-7. to That's something that a bunch of other Big 12 teams haven't done. Hey. <laughs> I'm I don't, just I don't, saying. Don't, I'm don't. just <laughs> saying. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I get it. I get it. Iowa State's probably better than both of those teams. But but if you're going just off logic, like it doesn't line up. That's all that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, but you also understand that week one losses are very forgivable, especially during during yes. the COVID year. But I, I am not taking anything away from either of those teams. But it, mainly we know- Coastal Carolina is my thing. I, I genuinely Coastal think Carolina. that Coastal Carolina could compete in a game with Iowa State. I'm not saying they okay. could win, but I think they could compete. And I don't even think that that's outrageous in me just being like a G5 lover. Like genuinely. Well, I agree with you, but <laughs> but if you look at Iowa State, they beat OU. They went into Austin and beat Texas. Yes. And if Matt Campbell w- is a phenomenal coach. They've got a great quarterback and they've got uh, they play like a team. Exactly. And now if they beat OU a second time, I mean, then you're talking about something, but no, uh, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see, man, but okay. You know, as we talk about it more, as much as I wish that those two teams and that win meant more because it, it was a damn impressive win. And I get that it's the, you know, the, it's the first game of the season. But it is kind of unbelievable that there are like three two loss teams. Um, yeah, there there are one, two, three, four. There are four two loss teams over an eleven and zero team. Who was At, Ohio State, Iowa State's other loss to? Uh, Oklahoma State. Okay, well that used to be a good loss. Yeah, that's what I, you see. What I'm saying. Yeah. So. That's why I'm like, okay, fine. You don't want to rock with the Sun Belt? That's cool. Cincinnati. <laughs> Cincinnati Cincinnati should it's, be higher. They've dropped, bro. I'm just telling you. This is the way that I think about it, uh, Ryan. Cincinnati, I really genuinely think, could probably beat LSU this year. Even really? right now. I, I think I, so. I might agree with you on that. Like, Because but- <laughs> they have a really good coach is the other thing. Like, Luke Fickle is an Ohio State product. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I mean, I get why you can't. I don't know. I genuinely think you could put them higher. My, you can definitely put them higher. My, my problem is the American it was very weak this year, and it's the strongest group of five usually. And they're playing their first ranked matchup this weekend against Tulsa. So maybe after that you can put them higher. And if they're undefeated and Clemson loses, then you have something to talk about. But regardless, and it's another thing with Coastal outside mm-hmm. of the BYU win, which still isn't strong compared to a lot of the other wins these teams have, like Texas A&M over Florida, it's, you, they haven't played this, com- this, this level of competition, and you understand that if you put them in the playoff, they're going to lose. And yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, anybody's going to lose. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. it's like who earned it. So, so here's the one counter argument. One, one, I, w- I would like to say that I, I get what you're saying. Like I see where you're coming from. The one counter argument, just to appease the you know Cincinnati people and, and the G5 crowd, is that I believe I'm trying to find the exact stat right now, but Cincinnati's margin of victory, I believe, is second in the country only to Alabama. Yeah. So – while yes, they haven't played that great of a schedule, they've also beat the crap out of everybody they've played. You know what I'm saying? So That's like you fair. can't you can't even get mad at them for like, you know, oh, they didn't play that great of a schedule. Well, you know, other than UCF, which I think UCF regardless is a darn good team every yeah. year, regardless, right? They've built a powerhouse down there. 
they have beat every other team, let's see, 55 to 20, 24 to 10, but that's against Army. So, like, it's hard to score points in that game just because mm-hmm. of the way Army plays. Um, 28-7 South Florida, eh, maybe could have scored more there. Um, 42-13 SMU, 49-10 Memphis, 38-10 Houston, 55-17 Eastern Carolina, and then they still have to play Tulsa. So I I get what people are saying, and I get where you're coming from. Like, I don't – do I really think – I don't, well, actually, I don't know. I, I don't. I Cincinnati might be able to beat Florida um, if LSU can. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Um, but uh, I, I don't think they could probably beat Georgia now with with JT Daniels as the starter. Um, yeah, I just I wouldn't have an issue putting Cincinnati higher if they played one Power Five team. Just yeah. one. It could be it could be Kansas, but just play one. Well, it, okay. If that's your argument, then Ryan, then then why aren't the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers? Up at up at number six then, because Coastal Carolina played uh, a Power Five team in Kansas and they played yeah. BYU. Yeah, but I mean, Coastal that's just a fun belt story, you know. Like Cincinnati plays in a legitimate Group Five conference, if there is one. <laughs> I'm just saying they they beat Louisiana, who beat Iowa State 31-14. I know you're saying it's a fluke, but. I don't know. I honestly think Coastal's better than Cincinnati. Um, maybe think not. So? Maybe not. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, they might be. Uh, I could be wrong on yeah. that though. That would. Here's the other thing. I think that would be a close game. That's what I'll say about that. Cincinnati might win that game, but it would be a close one. Um, and I think that honestly, Cincinnati and Coastal versus Iowa State would be a close one. Um, so maybe not. But I, well, actually, yeah, I genuinely believe both of those statements. Um, well, okay. There you go. But <sighs> this is just a tragedy, Ryan. The rest of this, I'm looking at this, and the rest of this is just crap. Okay, but the one thing I will say, I okay, just, how it? So, do you are you cool with Iowa State at six? Yeah. Let's just go back um, to that. You know, I honestly, and call me crazy, call me crazy. You, I don't know how you don't have USC in the top seven right now. undefeated probably going to be conference champion they're playing three and two oregon but i mean but they don't have a lot of games well and their lot their wins aren't that great bud <laughs> like yeah. like they I, I get what you're saying but i they're get undefeated. the undefeated i get the attraction okay well if they're undefeated then coastal carolina okay the pac-12 is basically the sun belt um at this point so <laughs> Like, okay, okay, maybe not that, but the Pac-12, honestly, I would say that the American, like, I think UCF could beat it's a lot comparable. of teams in the it's Pac-12. It's comparable. Yeah. So if that's the case, then you got to put Cincinnati above them. And I like Southern Cal, like, I like that idea because it it solves a lot of problems for the committee. But let me, let me just look at their wins right now, because I think that they have some bad wins. Like, I think they've got, the reason that they're down there, man, is because they have some 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 like two point wins against like some bad teams. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me just double check this here. Come on. I don't I don't want to see Texas State versus A&M Corpus Christi. Give me USC football ESPN. Okay. So 28-27 over Arizona State. And Arizona State is yeah. currently well they're one and two <laughs> and they lost to UCLA but they did beat Arizona 70 to 7 um so not that impressive um oh and then they went and play Arizona the next week the team that Arizona State beat 70 to 7 and win 34 30 Arizona is Oh and five. Are you talking? I'm not talking. Okay, I was I was getting like some stuff in my ears here, and I wasn't sure if it was uh if it was you or not. But okay, so yeah, a four point win over an zero and five Arizona team. Okay, they beat Utah thirty three to seventeen. Utah's two and two. Yeah, but they're a good two and two. That's a good team. They're better <laughs> they're- than the record. Yeah, but 
I mean, but I, I understand your point. That, I understand that doesn't point. erase the Arizona loss. Then you've got 38 13 over a Wazoo team. And to be honest with you, Wazoo's probably better than their record, too. They're one and two. I will give you that. Wazoo's a decent team. Um, or are they? Maybe Oregon State's just terrible. Um, <laughs> and then that 43 hey. to 38 win over UCLA, who's three and three. And I will give them credit on that because that was a hell of a comeback. Um, and they may be 6-0 here beating Oregon, but Oregon's not that great this year either because they lost to Oregon State. Um, so the worst win on that schedule is a four-point game against an 0-5 team in Arizona who just fired Kevin Sumlin. Yeah. The, you know what? Now now that we've gone through it, it's still pretty rough. They're undefeated. They're at number 13. If they win the conference championship, we might have something to talk about, but... They're going to have to go out there. Oregon is still pretty bad. They're going to have to go out there and like, they're going to have to put on a show. They're going to have to beat, they're going to have to put like 50 on Oregon and hold them to at least 14. That's the only way they're going to have an argument. Okay. But are we, are we cool with Iowa state at six? I'm good. If you're good, big 12, baby. (sighs) As much as it pains me to, to say this in honor of the fun belt, I, I, well, I agree. I agree. I agree there. I'm not Thank mad you. at it. There you go. Now we can be mad about the next one. Okay, yeah. This is where I think Cincinnati has an argument to to be yeah. above both of these teams. Um, Florida at seven. I get it's because of a shoe, but that doesn't change the fact that you were being that you were <laughs> that you were- LSU played 26 sophomores and freshmen. LSU's true freshman when Arik Gilbert, who was their best their best true freshman, number one, like Gatorade high school athlete of the year across all sports opts out, says, I don't want anything to do with that. And they go in there and and beat him. And Cole or not Cole Tracy. That's another LSU kicker who made a miracle kick. Um, Cade York hits a 57 yarder in the fog. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay. But you just, the point is you lost to historically one of the worst, one of the worst defending national champions in college football history and one of and statistically the worst defense in LSU history. Yeah, I like I understand the whole shoe thing and if that shoe thing didn't happen, they would have barely beaten. Yeah, the game is still tied. Yeah, yeah exactly. How much in time, the how fourth much, quarter? How a much time was left? 56, Ryan. Yeah, exactly. Anything <laughs> can happen and then okay, if things went to overtime, Florida wins, maybe they were they were LSU played tight the entire way, and they and were they had, by a lot. And, and they had, like, two, I think. They might have had three, but I know for sure they had two goal line stops yeah, on exactly. fourth down. Like, so Florida just did not look good at all against <laughs> a horrible LSU team. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're doing, and especially, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't know necessarily what Georgia's wins and what their losses look like right now. I see seven and two. I don't know what that. Uh, contains, one of those losses but... is to Bama, and one of those losses is to Florida. And yeah, that's before so... JT Daniels. Exactly. So with JT Daniels, it's a totally different team because that offense is actually functioning, and George Pickens is actually a factor. But Cincinnati, they're undefeated. Like, how do you not have them? If you don't want to put them exactly, if you don't want, if you want to put Texas A and M and Iowa State above them based on their wins and losses, that's fine. But they're undefeated, and you have to put them over two teams that just well, Florida just lost. (laughs) Florida just lost. That just happened. Just spot. That's that is that is ridiculous. The committee just thinks that this four and five LSU team is just they're (laughs) they're way better than their record, man. Uh, they have to. They they, have to. They, yeah, I guess this committee is just like, man, the LSU Tigers, if they didn't, you know, have their worst defense ever, they'd be really good. <laughs> yeah, or maybe they think that uh, the the shoe, the shoe contained like 20 of LSU's points and they were like, oh, well, if they didn't throw the shoe, then that wouldn't have been a, it wouldn't have been a game. No, it's still tied. What? Max, Max Johnson, their true freshman quarterback, was SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Against Florida. <laughs> In his first start in the swamp. It just it does not make sense to me. This does not make sense. 
It doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, no, Florida, honestly. Okay, you know what? Actually, Ryan, I'm going to I'm gonna pose something else to you. Windiana's down there at 11, okay? And who have they lost to? The number four team in the country where they lost by a touchdown and picked off Justin Fields, who's way better than Kyle Trask, three times. Why don't you put them at seven if you don't want to put Cincinnati there, if you value Ohio State so highly? You want to know why? Why, Ryan? Three words. Michael Penix Jr. Doesn't matter. They beat Wisconsin with their backup. (laughs) Wisconsin is not that great. But look. They have the best quarterback they've had in a while. He's he's been cold, but talent-wise, Graham Mertz is the best quarterback they've had in a while. All I'm saying is if you're you're putting Ohio State at four, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Why is Indiana, who their only loss is to a one-touchdown game against Ohio State, why are they not above Florida and Georgia? Well, I, I agree with you that they could be higher, but I think if I'm trying to be in the committee's mind, they don't think Indiana can be a legitimate threat to anyone without their starting quarterback. Okay. And I'm inclined to agree with them. I agree with that too. But uh, if we're going by the record, okay, if you want to talk about that, then we can get into the whole Kellen Mond conversation, bro. Oh, my God. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I I do see what you're saying. So, like, all I'm saying is move them above Florida. That's all I'm saying. I would agree with you. I think Florida should be below, maybe not Oklahoma, but the rest, I think they should be below Georgia, Cincinnati, and Indiana. Yeah. You know what? And I know they beat Georgia, but, like. Yeah, maybe just to throw you a bone, put them below Coastal. Yes, let's go. Yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, all I'm saying is uh, the number one, uh, this is a totally, this is a total jump, but Dylan Gabriel, UCF's quarterback, is actually, he's leading the country in passing yards per game. They were showing yeah. a little stat. They were like, Kyle Trask, second in passing yards per game. And I was like, who's number one? They're like, Dylan Gabriel, UCF. I was like, he's not even the best quarterback in Florida. Um <laughs> But uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> anyways, no, but seriously, I think who would you put here at seven? At seven, personally, I would put Cincinnati. Okay, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. So basically, one through six, we're okay with, even reluctantly. Um, and then we've got Cincinnati at seven. And then who do you have at eight? I'm okay with Georgia at, at eight. I agree. And then nine and 10, I would probably put. I personally, I would probably go Indiana nine. And if you want to have OU at 10, that's fine. And then Coastal at 11. Yeah. So the one thing I do is just I'm I'm going to give credit where it's damn due. And I'm putting, right, Coast, okay. I'm putting Coastal at 10 um, because <laughs> they're undefeated. And they took BYU on two days notice when everybody thought BYU was going to go in and smack them, including myself. And they won. And they stopped them on the one-yard line. And their 5'9 center was going toe-to-toe with the big Samoan defensive tackle from the BYU Cougars, who's 6'4", 325, and he was holding his own because it's the damn fun belt. Um, oh, my God. And uh, I, I'd put them at 10, but, yeah, I got IU at 9. And Oklahoma, you have two losses. You're not 11-0. Did you take BYU on two days' notice? I don't oh think you God. beat Kansas 48-7. to So that's my thing. <laughs> What do you think would have happened with BYU if they didn't take that coastal game? Uh, do they have any more games? Do they, they do they have? They had West San Diego State. No, they're an independent, bro. Oh shoot, that's right. I was so they're Mountain West. Yeah, I, I w- it would be cool for them to be in the Mountain West. That would probably beef the Mountain West up because then you've got them in Boise State in the ti- in the title game over there every year. That would be really mm-hmm. fun. Okay, but regardless, um, they're not group of five. So I mean, yeah, exactly. So I mean, they would be nine and zero right now, um, yeah. and then they beat San Diego State like twenty eight to fourteen, which still isn't that great of a win. As much as I think they're super talented and love watching that team, um, yeah. Let me just double check that score. Yeah, they only beat San Diego State twenty eight fourteen. So they go with uh, New Year's six, I think. Yeah, maybe, maybe. No, I, I think, think I think Cincinnati probably gets in because they'd be a conference champion. That's fair. Okay. 
Yeah, I wish it. Yeah. I, w- I wish, man. Hey, but we're getting a really good bowl with BYU. They're playing UCF next Tuesday in the Boca That'll Raton be Bowl. Good. That'll and that's going to be a really fun game. So we're getting a great bowl for BYU. Um, but yeah, so frustration <laughs> with Florida still being frustration, there. Pain, angst. Yeah, all of it. Um, <laughs> oh, speaking of Florida, real quick. Um, Mackenzie Melton going to Florida State. Oh yeah, That's, I saw that. That and he's gonna, they, you know, not even they, not even they can mess him up. <laughs> if he's still good, if he, if he my, can still Mike play. Mike Norvell, I, I, he's basically cleared house. So, and and he watched, you know, he competed and coached against him at Memphis. Um. Yeah. So, you know, I'm pretty convinced that, you know, Mackenzie Milton's got one national championship under his belt. So I think he's going to get his next, next year. Wow. <laughs> Did you just say that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. The 2017 national champions. I'm fine with that. I'm it was fine with that. I'm fine with that. But you said get his next one next year. Yeah, man. He's All the right. greatest okay. quarterback in college football history. <laughs> okay. You know what though? You know what? If he, he can actually play football. If he can still play football, then I think that Florida State's going to be pretty damn good. I agree. No, I don't. I don't think they'll beat Clemson. Um, I don't think they'll beat North Carolina. But I think that they could be a New Year's Six team if he can play. I would agree. I would agree. But it's really contingent upon that leg. Yeah, and the one thing that I would say is I think that his injury wasn't as bad as Alex Smith's. Um, yeah. And I think he's taken more time off. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really hope that he is just back to as close as he can be to playing for him because Mackenzie Milton is fun as hell to watch. But yeah, I think that wraps it up. I think that we're just kind of like, why is Florida at seven? That makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. But everything else, uh, give Cincinnati their due. For Jude's sake, so he doesn't have a conniption, give Coastal their due. Just Respect 10. The All Clues. I'm asking is and top 10. That, That's he's, as, he's asking for top 10, and it's for <laughs> for why. I don't know. But you know what? There you go. This is the world of college football through the eyes of They're Jude They're the McClendon. only 11-0 team in the country, Ryan. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, you're right. You know what? By that, Alabama's only ten and zero. So, huh. <laughs> yeah, man. Put them at one. Put them yeah, at one. That's what I'm saying. They're the best team in the country. <laughs> if it was any, if it was any other no. sport, they would probably be at number one. No, you know it's you know it's genuinely crazy about Coastal Carolina is in 2016 they won a baseball national championship. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, I mean, they have a decent pro athletic program, um, but yeah, no, not, not, I genuinely don't think they beat a lot of those teams, but I do think that you should at least put them in the top 10. I, I, I don't think it's, I mean, if Oklahoma wins the, honestly, dude, we might be looking at Oklahoma getting in again. No, no, they would never do that, especially with two losses. Well, you're saying oh, Iowa state's no, got two no. losses and one of their losses is to the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. 31 to 14. Yeah, but they haven't. Yeah, but they haven't gone like 0 and 8 in the playoffs. Oh, you okay. goes into the playoff every year and gets well, then spanked. Who else? Who else? Who else is? Who else are they going to put in other than that one year with Baker Mayfield when they played Georgia so close and one of the best games I've ever watched? If okay, if Clemson loses, mm-hmm. I, I genuinely I hate to say it, but I think they're going to put AM in. I don't think so, I, I don't bro. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. I don't think the, I don't think the committee's putting A and M in because you've already seen that then game. Who do they? If Iowa State's the Big Twelve champion, then maybe. I think they'll get in. I think if they think Iowa State is at six, I would say Cincinnati. But I don't know if they they're would not going to put they're not going to put Cincinnati gonna... in. They dropped them, so they're yeah. not putting them in. It's what gonna if, be. What if Florida still? No way. No, no, no way. No, no, they, no. no way. They. The only, if if they beat Alabama, maybe. But the, <laughs> yeah. if Clemson loses and Florida beats Alabama and they still get in, oh, that would be wild. That would be horrible. That would be terrible. Yeah, that would be awful. 
I don't think that's going to happen though. I think before we wrap this up going into going into championship weekend, um, just what are your, what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's go through the conference championship games and, and I'm curious to see what you think will happen in those games, because that will kind of determine what happens here. NCAA football, where are you? Okay, here we go. So, all right. Oregon, USC in the Pac-12 championship game. Who you got? USC. Same. Okay. Northwestern, Ohio State in the Big Ten. Ohio State. Same. Oklahoma, Iowa State. Who you got? Texas. One of these teams, I one of these teams is going to get clapped with COVID. Texas is waiting to get in. Texas will not lose to the same team twice. Okay, well, if it does get okay. played, who who are you picking? I'm going to be rooting hard for Iowa State. Do you think they'll win? I think they can. Do you, do you think they'll win? Spen- Spencer Rattler's never played in a massive game like this. Okay, all of these things are true, but I'm asking, who do you think is going to win the game? Oklahoma's going to win the football game. Okay, pain. Sorry for you. Okay, but okay, I didn't know that. So if one of these teams get COVID, does Texas get in? Texas is third in the conference. Yep. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> it's happening, baby. It's Tom Herman. It's not going to happen. Uh, if that happened, it might happen. It Jeez. happened to Oregon. Oregon yeah. got in. Yeah, but also I feel like the Pac-12 was like, we want Oregon to play in this game. Um, okay, so you think Oklahoma's going to win. This is tough for me because I kind of think they're going to win too. But I'm going to go. <sighs> it's a safe bet. I would yeah. love to see Iowa State win though. Let me look at something real quick. I'm going to look at a Iowa State's schedule. I'm going to see how their last... Okay. You know what? Oh, shoot. Because they've already played. Yeah. Never mind. I'm going Oklahoma. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Louisiana and Coastal Carolina, Ryan. Who you got in the game of the year? I'm going to have to give it up to... Uh... Louisiana, baby, they're coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> Honestly, they might win this game. Down go the Chanticleers. <sighs> so I, as much as, as everything in my core would want me to say the same thing, after I saw that Coastal game, uh, first of all, this is being played in Coastal. Um, but second of all, after I saw Coastal with like a 50 seconds left come back in that Troy game, I just think that they can overcome anything. Um, but I could see Louise, this is going to be a really fun game to watch. And yeah. I am so pissed that it's on at the same time as the LSU Ole Miss game. But luckily, I can record it. Um, but I'm going to go coastal. I'm going to go coastal there. Okay. Okay. Clemson and Notre Dame. <sighs> Clemson. Clemson. Yeah, I think. I, I think this is either going to be a really close game. Or Clemson's going to go in there and beat the crap I do. out of them. So I do, I've i always had a soft spot for Notre Dame. My dad grew up a Notre Dame fan, as okay. he comes from the Northeast. So I've always kind of liked Notre Dame. So I'm going to be rooting for him. But also, I really want to see all hell break loose when Clemson loses, if Clemson were to lose. Oh, if they lose, then everything. I would, yeah. yeah. I don't know what that would happen. I just, so. I just think Trevor Lawrence is going to go yeah. in there. and Trevor and, Lawrence doesn't lose. Yeah. He doesn't lose. He's lost once, and that, I'll lose again. That was, <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm going Clemson. I like the line has Clemson by ten and a half, and I like that. I think it I think won't be. I, I don't think that um, it'll be. I don't think they'll necessarily blow them out of the water. Although I think that's a possibility, but I think they'll just kind of handily win the game by about about two scores. I would okay, agree. here's a fun one: undefeated San Jose State. At number 24 in these rankings, playing Boise in the Mountain West Championship. Ooh, baby. You know what? I Boise always finds themselves on top. Maybe maybe they'll do it again. I uh, I haven't seen either team play this season. Uh, they're <laughs> Boise State, State got is... rocked by BYU. Did they? Okay, yeah. well, everyone did. 
Yeah. Except, except for, for uh, yeah. except for coastal Carolina. All right. You know, what? <laughs> give me. Give me I kind of S- want to pick the Trojans. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, give me San Jose State. I think so too, man. I think where are they playing? I don't. It, I don't. Okay, so San Jose State's the home team. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go San Jose State too. I think they're gonna come into this game feeling a little disrespected. Everybody's gonna say Boise always wins, and they're gonna go undefeated, and then they're gonna start making playoff arguments. And that's, oh, there you go. And then that, that'll be great. Undefeated conference champions. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, Alabama, Florida, Alabama. Yeah, by yeah. a million. Same. All right, Tulsa and Cincinnati. That's who's Tulsa lost to this year. I don't know, but I'm gonna go Cincinnati. But I think Tulsa's pretty good. I I wouldn't be surprised. This is gonna be a close. Tulsa's only loss is to Oklahoma State. That's in impressive. A Sixteen to seven game. Should we put? But it was the just the no. It was just the first game of the year, Ryan. We don't care about that. Let's put them in the playoff, man. Let's do it. Tulsa, Tulsa, Tulsa versus Alabama. Oh Lord, <laughs> that might be better than A and M. Um, Ooh, I genuinely think that Coastal Bama would be better than A and M. Um, Bama. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have, their center is five nine, <laughs> <laughs> and he was and he was going hard against that six four three twenty five DT from BYU. Okay. Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna go Cincy too, but that's gonna be a close game, and I'm glad that it's on the primetime spot on ABC. So if everything happens that way, Ryan, then everything will be joyous. And regardless of the other BS rankings, it will probably be Alabama one, Clemson two. And I think just because they don't want to see the same game twice, they'll probably put Ohio State at three and then Notre Dame at four. I would agree. I would agree. And then, you know what, for the the hell of it, if Clemson loses, who do you have as your top four? I have the Big 12 champ, even if it's Oklahoma. Okay. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and say if unless, Clemson loses. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Unless Florida somehow beats Bama. This yeah. is all under the assumption that Florida doesn't beat Bama. Because if Florida beats Bama, then they get into four. Right. So let's say that Alabama beats Florida, takes care of the business. Clemson right. loses. I think it's going to be the Big 12 champ. But if, if A&M handily beats Tennessee, it's just a natural progression. Pain. Okay, actually, you know, you know what I would do if I was the committee? You know what I would genuinely do? And people would hate me for this. I would put Clemson in at four. If it was my personal opinion, I would put Clemson in at four. Well, it makes sense because if... if, if then Trevor if Lawrence the rankings, has only lost one game. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and, and if, then your secondary wasn't there too, especially if it's a close game. Like Right. But if the rankings work the way they're supposed to work, then Notre Dame should beat Clemson again. Because they're number two and Clemson's number three. Yeah, not but gonna happen though. Exactly. They never you, you could be the number three team, you could be the number fifteen team and lose by a touchdown to the number anywhere else, one through ten team, and you're gonna get punished for it. Yeah. It's a flaw, but it is our world. Facts. Well, Rug, it's been it's been I don't know how long this went. It went a while because it was a good one, rants. Scoob. It was a good one. It was a good one. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we can wrap this thing up. Thanks for spending some time with me and talking some college football playoffs. Welcome to the Strive Network YouTube channel. If you've been listening this whole time, we will have more and more content coming out on the Strive YouTube channel. I will actually probably do a little bit of a recap, make another video tonight um, Mm. on the Spurs game. So anyways, y'all check it out for Ryan Calloway. Oh, do you want me to speak? Say my name. <laughs> that's that's been all from this strive chat with Ryan Galloway and Scooby McLaren. If you liked what you saw, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends for more amazing strive content. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Over and out. <laughs>